after a failed assault on Iconia. The Alliance fleet of Klingon, Romulan and Federation ships was all but destroyed. The mission began as an effort to launch a final attack against the Iconia Dyson Sphere in order to steal out control of the Gateway Network from them and deny them their space hopping advantage. Things seemed to be going well as we gained access to their command Dreadnought and even learned that the Iconian leader Matara was aboard. Uncovering a weakness in their setup, we managed to kill a god but were forced to retreat when two more turned up to avenge their comrade. The strike team, depleted from the constant battles, had to retreat and we fled the sphere with notions of regrouping only to find that the fleet had been reduced to wrecks. Now with most of our resources spent, the Alliance is leaning ever more on the completion of the Krenim Temporal Weapon. The research teams in the Kiana system require your assistance. They have been running thousands of temporal incursion simulations of how to use the Krenim Weapon. But I need an officer with field experience to evaluate the project and its feasibility. You will participate in a focus test of the most promising options. A blade cuts both ways. We must be sure that what this weapon can do to the Iconians does not cause greater harm to us." Kagarin's words reflect the doubts that many involved with the project have shared publicly and privately, but we're considering it seriously now because, well, we're running out of options. We beam over to the Krenim timeship. Based on the unfinished project of the scientist Anorax, it's clearly been at least a week since the Battle of Iconia, judging by the progress they've made. If one thing came out of that disaster, it's at least that we've bought some time, it seems. Here to greet us is Republic researcher Adrana. Welcome! We have been working with the Krenim to build both this facility and a weapon similar to the one developed by Anorax in the 22nd century. Captain Nog is running point for the Alliance, but teams from all across the Alpha and Beta Quadrants are involved with the research. It's fascinating work, but there's a lot to do yet. Well, I was told you guys needed me, so how can I help? Captain Nog might be able to explain more. He's waiting for you. And before we continue, how have you been, Adrana? It was her help we had when we first uncovered the Iconian Gateway on Dewa 3, now New Romulus. It's good to see you too. For a few weeks, I was helping the Alliance research new ways to deactivate Iconian gateways. We were making progress, but it wasn't fast enough to stop the advance of the Heralds. After Captain Nog made contact with the Krenim, I asked to transfer here. Now I'm working with Interdimensional Resonance Harmonics to help recreate Anorax's work. We can ask her how her sleep has been recently, as she was one of several targets of the Solene abductions. Yes, yes I have. I guess the Solene aren't visiting me at night anymore. Or maybe it's the 14 hour days trying to wrap my brain around complex temporal equations that are wearing me out. Either way, my sleep is greatly improved. Thank you for asking. Ah, well you said Nog wanted to chat, so lead the way. We follow Adrana into a room illuminated by some sort of chroniton reactor, where there are several familiar faces gathered. In such density, the light cast from the particles inside the chamber creates a rainbow of colours across the room. Add some drum and bass and you know if the world fails, at least you can rent this place out as a den for raves. In the centre of the room lies what I assume is a Federation Hollow Matrix, judging by the Elkar's interface. Still, ready to see what this all entails, we report to Captain Nog. I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances. We've managed to make a prototype of the Krenim weapon in Anorax's records, but we have not attempted to use it yet. Time isn't something you mess around with. 
So we have been conducting simulations here of possible incursions, as well as developing new ways to protect and store data on various timelines. Can you explain to me how this is all supposed to work? I mean, I know. I'm just making sure you know. I mean, this ship's not exactly a, a time machine or anything, right? When we talk about time alteration, we're specifically referring to the Krenum weapon's ability to remove something from time. Anything. From a single molecule to an entire civilization. It's as if the target of the weapon never existed at all. So, whatever it hits, it literally deletes from ever having it existing. Correct. The changes ripple out from the incursion point and result in a new reality where the target no longer exists. This does mean that the ship must be able to fire on a target. The details are a bit more complex, of course, but that's the main difference from conventional time travel. I see, so it's not a time machine, but it's a very powerful method of temporal manipulation nonetheless. I'm surprised that we're going ahead with it. Surely other people have voiced their concerns. Temporal agents from all three factions are watching everything we do carefully. That's one of the reasons we're running holodeck simulations first. Between you and me, I'm glad they're here. The Krenum are a little too eager to use the weapon. Time manipulation is a very delicate operation under the best of circumstances. We can't just start shooting things out of existence and hoping it all works out for the best. Well, on that, I completely agree. So we could just, say, fly this thing to Iconia, point it at the planet and fire, and boom! Iconia never existed. That was the first simulation we tried. The results were fairly catastrophic. Catastrophic? Without the Iconians, the first development of warp technology by other cultures in the Alpha Quadrant is severely delayed. By about 50,000 years. Removing the Iconians would change everything we know. Right. A 50,000 year delay in technology galaxy-wide. I can see how that might fundamentally alter everything, but surely we'd get around to warp eventually. Let me put it this way. In one version, the Daywans eventually rise to power and conquer most of the Beta Quadrant. They are forced back by the Vulcans, who never embrace logic, and later enslave much of what is now Federation and Klingon space. Hmm, I can see how that might be a- I'm not done yet. The Herc never develop warp technology at all, so they never invade Kronos and unite the Klingons as a warrior culture. When the Vulcan Star Empire finds the Klingons in the 22nd century, they were mostly farmers who had made some advances in epic poetry. By the present day in this simulation, the Vulcan Star Empire is locked in a to-the-death struggle with the Dominion. You're enjoying this a bit, aren't you? It's okay, it's fun to peer into alternate what-ifs, but I agree, this weapon is a scalpel, not a sledgehammer. Sela, after she escaped Romulan captivity, mentioned that the Iconians had a weakness with time travel. Have we looked into that any further? Oh, that the Iconians can't time travel because it unravels their minds. She was being dramatic, but she was essentially correct. When most humanoids time travel, they retain the memories of their timeline of origin. So you realize when things have changed. Iconians are at least partially energy beings. You saw that when Matara was able to use their own power to open gateways. And their brain structure is very different from other humanoids. As far as we understand, if an Iconian traveled back in time, their mind and memories would reshape to fit that time. So they would retain no memories of the present. They don't use time travel because it would literally be taking a step backwards. I see, so an Iconian mind shifts to whatever points it was in at that time. They're masters of space, not time it seems. Oh, you mentioned protection? Once we make an incursion, anything not protected by a temporal shield will conform to the new timeline. That includes all of us once this mission is over. We won't remember the Iconians, the war, or anything that changes in the new timeline. Clouda has been leading the work to create a shielded computer core to hold all the data we currently have. A time capsule, I guess you'd call it. Hold up, wouldn't this temporal shield still have to stay active forever? Correct. This isn't the sort of sacrifice we'd expect any personnel involved in the incursion to make. So we've built a computer to retain the information for us. We'll know what happened before, even though it essentially will have happened to someone else. Oh, we're all just stories in the end anyway. So, has all this extensive study provided a target? Some small change we can make to catapult us into an advantageous timeline? We've tried a different number of scenarios, but only in the holodeck. Direct action against the Iconians is proving to be problematic, because so much time has passed since they were first a great power. Incursions that far back in time must be carefully planned, 
or the fallout of even minor changes can ripple across reality. Right, evil Vulcans. We have, however, seen some promise in trying to delay their arrival. That would be a much smaller ask, wouldn't it? One where we push their attack back on the Milky Way, but a few years? Actually, it would be closer to a 700 year delay if our calculations are correct. The Iconians have had 200,000 years to build their fleets, but we're catching up to them. We've already seen what the 29th century technology can do. Imagine what we'll have in the 32nd century. Well, at least one Crossfield class starship. But you're saying because we'd still have a record of this event, we'd have 700 years to prepare and be on equal footing. Exactly. The other potential solution is to cut into their current power base. What if the Iconians never allied with the Alachi or the Solene? We wouldn't be facing the trouble we do now. Alright, so, what are your best case scenarios? The three most promising incursions each follow one of these tactics. My teams have been running simulations and refining their targets, but I'd like you to assist them using a special quantum recursive algorithm. Our simulators can run the outcome of a possible incursion on the holodeck. Interacting with that simulation will give us more data than just crunching the numbers. We need to really interact with it to see what reality would look like, and for that, I need someone like you with field experience. We can again voice our displeasure at changing time, say that we'll do whatever it takes to end the war, or choose the more neutral approach of simply admitting curiosity. Huh, among the familiar faces is Commander Jorok of the RRW Lisset, and her sub-commander. We also have Temporal Agent Philip Cray still observing, as well as the shadowy figure of Section 31's Franklin Drake. We also have Klingon Lieutenant Korn of House Nogra, the Klingon version of Temporal Investigations. When all is said and done, we can talk to the first of the researchers, Alpha Team Leader, Soften. Hello. Please allow me to explain what we're doing here. We've determined that if we remove a specific series of stars from the Beta Quadrant in the distant past, a rogue planet will enter the Iconia system and cause massive geological damage at about the same time the planet was bombarded by the Iconians' enemies. The technological buildup of the orbital bombardment that destroyed the Iconian civilization will still happen, but the Iconians themselves will have to deal with a natural disaster, not a war. Right, and what difference do you predict that makes? Maybe the survivors of a natural disaster, if there are any, won't be so vengeful, and none of the stars we will remove have planets with the possibility of developing life. The overall effect on the galaxy is minimal. It's a painful path, but it could be the one that leads to peace. Every option here leads to the same dialogue, so this all seems rather extreme, doesn't it? The number of stars we will have to remove is a concern, which is why we're trying this in a simulation first. But as Captain Nog said, these simulations aren't perfect, so we have devised a holodeck program that will expand and extrapolate on possible effects of the temporal incursion. You're putting an awful lot of faith in hollow programs and algorithms. It's the best option we have available to us. The holodeck's algorithms have been updated to change and adapt to the data created by the simulated timeline alteration. This is not your average hollow novel. Alright, well, just tell me what you need me to do and we can take a look. Once we run the program, you'll be able to interact with our best approximation of the new timeline. Interaction with the holodeck components will allow the program to generate a more in-depth solution and give us a better idea of what to expect. We have set this simulation on a Federation starship patrolling the Sol system, and you are the captain. If all goes as planned, we expect that almost everything in the system should be close to current reality. I'm betting you can't account for every variable. This should be good. Hey, Agent Cray, have you seen what they're trying to do? Think it's gonna work? Anything involving temporal mechanics is complicated, but the short answer is yes. I am watching these simulations very closely, as are my counterparts from the Republic and the Klingon Empire. Even small changes to time can have large and lasting effects. On Earth, we've called this the butterfly effect. The metaphorical example is of a butterfly flapping its wings and starting a chain of events that lead to a hurricane on the other side of the planet. So how's the Department of Temporal Investigations feeling about this whole thing? This is exactly the sort of thing you're supposed to prevent, usually. Again, it is complicated. 
Suffice it to say that at this moment in time, our governments have all agreed that our options are limited. This might be our best chance to stop or delay the Iconians. But temporal investigations will intervene if we feel that the cure is more dangerous than the disease. I understand, and strangely I agree with Nog. That makes me feel better. Hello. Hi, but doesn't this still all violate the Temporal Prime Directive, or are we putting that on hold as well? Under ordinary circumstances, perhaps. It's only because the Iconian situation is so desperate that we're allowing this research to continue. You've been on the front lines of the war. I'm sure you realize how few options we have left. Uh, yeah. When we're ready to, we step inside the holodeck, which is a rather state-of-the-art one from all appearances. The program is loaded and the teams are observing, so fueled by the potential of what-ifs and maybes, we initiate the program. Ah, well, this just looks peachy. Alright, let's not jump to conclusions, let's see what's going on here. Okay, so this is supposed to be in the Sol system, correct? 2410 on the Defiant class USS Ajax. Well, things do not look good. Captain, you're alive! We repelled the intruders on the bridge, but the ship has taken heavy damage, and a lot of the crew are injured. Oh my word, what is the situation? Sir, I'm not sure this is the time. So many people are hurt, and most of the systems are offline. The life support is on backups, and our resources are down to nothing, and- Spare me the details. We shall stabilize the crew and fight back. So says your captain. The Dominion stopped firing at us when we lost weapons. Now they're focusing on Earth's defense grid, but it's only a matter of time before they return to finish us off. Don't worry, I shall stabilize the crew, and then we shall fight back. This isn't over. Have heart. You there, it is but a scratch. Stop catnapping. Sir, I, I tried to fight them off. But the boarding parties, the Jem'Hadar. We have to stop the Dominion, they can't take Earth too. Don't worry, we shall stop them. Things may look bleak, and they are. Yeah, there's no follow-up. We, we can't stop them. Maybe if we hadn't been at war with the Romulans. Maybe if the... Klingons hadn't ripped themselves apart. I'll... I'll be fine, Captain. Just rattle me. Why, thank you, Ensign Exposition. I never expected they would get so far into our defenses. I'm sorry, Captain. I just need a moment. Then I'll be ready to fight. Alright, whenever you're ready. Incoming hail! Huh? Yeah? What? You cool? What? No. Oh. USS Ajax, sensors show your ship is completely defenseless, and I would prefer not to delay our arrival at Earth to deal with such a minor annoyance. Surrender now, and I will guarantee the safety of your crew. <clears throat> Swivel on it, you purple powder on prick. Well, this has been a fun simulation, but I think we'll just read the recent status reports to get a wider idea. Oh dear. Beta Z, Tellar are occupied by the Dominion, 5.5 billion lost. Vulcan is now uninhabitable, 9.4 million dead. Now the captain's log also mentions the loss of Trill, Romulus, and Andoria is apparently on fire. Uh, however, there are no reports of anything resembling Iconians, so on that front it's a win. Well, computer, end program. So, no. Sorry, we were watching from the control room, and that could have gone better. Even with all that, the simulation data on whether the Iconians were entirely eliminated from that timeline is inconclusive. We were able to record your interactions, and we've been able to piece together what happened from those. No, I'm out of curiosity, what'd you find? From what we can piece together, the Klingon Empire was never unified by its conflicts against outsiders, and the Great Houses turned on one another instead. The Romulans took the chaos as an opportunity to attack. The Federation stepped in to help the Klingons, and the war between the three factions basically ripped the Quadrant apart. The Dominion then conquered all three weakened powers. Honestly, I'm surprised it took them until 2410 to reach the Sol system in that state. But, safe to say, this idea is a bust. Agreed. My team will continue working on other possible incursion scenarios.
We then move on to the Beta team, overseen by Noi, who we've met before and who clashes frequently with the Federation staff. Another one of you voyagers. I don't know how you can help, but very well. My team is working on scenarios that reduce the Iconian power base. We are attempting to do so by fixing a mistake that Janeway allowed to happen decades ago. We are going to stop the Vodwar from being rediscovered. We plan to do this by preventing Voyager from ever coming into contact with Underspace. This will prevent them from finding Vodwar Prime, and Seven of Nine will never wake the Vodwar. I'm, I'm sorry, one of you Voyagers? As in this ship? That's not my vessel. No, but you're all the same. You come to our quadrant, meddle in affairs that don't concern you and that you don't understand, and leave chaos in your wake. Now you want us to help you alter time. Tell me, does that sound like something someone like you should be doing? Oh, sorry, you are completely right. Let me just take back all of these resources we've poured into your project. Honestly, I'd rather this whole thing wasn't necessary at all, but here we are. None of us are going to survive if we don't try to repair the damage you've already done. The goal is to cause a solar flare that will force Voyager to divert from the course it was on when it stumbled into underspace. If it safely passes without entering underspace, it can continue on its trip home and bypass the Vaudoir entirely. It's a bit more subtle than deleting a couple of suns, so this might work. Load it up and we'll give it a try. The simulation is set for the USS Voyager, which is fitting since they caused the problem in the first place. Our projections show that even if the Vaudoir never return, your people will still find a reason to stick your noses into our business. That's fair. So, we're attempting to see how the elimination of the Vaudoir will change the formation of the Delta Alliance. You will be a member of the diplomatic team. So, contemporary 2410 Voyager, just in a different timeline. Before we go, we can also talk to the researcher, Claudia. Don't mind Noi. I think he partially blames people from your quadrant for some of the Krennin's troubles. After all, if Voyager hadn't restored the Vod War, they would have never been in a position to ally with the Iconians. But there is no reason to dwell on past hurts. We're trying to fix what we can here, and then learn to accept the rest. Noi funnels that passion to help his people into his work. Perhaps it will change everything. I don't believe we've met Admiral Hale. It is a pleasure to meet you. Both Captain Nog and Seven speak highly of you. Sorry to point this out in such an obvious fashion, but I don't think I've met someone of your species before. My name is Claudia and I am a Tutarian. We're from a region of the Delta Quadrant Voyager never visited, so we haven't had much contact with species from the Alpha and Beta Quadrants until now. However, my world has had close ties with the Krenim for several years. Now that they are actively pursuing temporal technology, I chose to join them and lend whatever assistance I can. I miss my home, but I've made a new one here. Meeting Noi has opened me up to a world beyond my own. Oh, you and Noi... what do you do here? I was on Kiana Prime with Noi when we received word of the Vaudoir attacks. We had only hours to get the temporal equipment running and remove the population from the time stream. Since then, the focus of my work has been developing more stable data storage. We can see into other timelines, but we need a way to secure the data through temporal shifts, so we can preserve information about incursions and their effects. In the case of a catastrophic shift, that data could be used as a map to restore the timeline. Yeah, yeah. Temporal save point. As before, we step into the holodeck and run the new simulation. This time, we are aboard the USS Voyager at the formation of the Delta Alliance to oppose the Iconians, but this time minus the Vardois' influence. This is an absolute disaster. I had thought that Admiral Tuvok was being pessimistic about the chance for success here. But now, I think he was right. Nonsense, Ambassador. Building alliances isn't a quick process. No, it's not. The hierarchy started setting these people against one another before Admiral Tuvok and his team could start to pull them together. 
The very fact that they all agreed to be in the same room is a minor miracle. Ah, yes, the hierarchy issue at the center of it all. Oh. Do you think you can get them working together? Eventually. Between Vulcan logic, Klingon tenacity, and Romulan pragmatism, we'll convince everyone here that the threat is real and an alliance is in their best interest. But it won't be easy. <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me, I see I have another argument to break up. Well, there's one change it's immediately noticeable. We've brought the mail on to the negotiating table. We've always tried to be good neighbors and treat other races with respect, but this is really too much. The Malon are using our system as a dump, and their trash isn't our problem. Ah, yes, we did once interfere with Malon dumping in a Talaxian colony, if I remember. Ambassador, you need to calm down. I should be shouting. I'm upset. The Malon are trying to force us off our beautiful new planet so they can turn it into something toxic. How would you like it if someone treated your ship like a garbage scow? I would show them the state-of-the-art recycling facility support the USS Armager and then throw them in. But enough about the Malon for now. What about the hierarchy? What do you think of them? The Malon claim the hierarchy are harassing them, but they're targeting our ships too. So I don't know what to believe, but there are rumors. Traitor talk. You know how it is. But I've heard it a lot lately. They say the hierarchy are capturing people and selling them to another race for experiments or as food. Ah, <gasps> food. They're using them as food. Do you think that's true? If it is, you need to stop focusing on the Malon and start focusing on the bigger threat. The Malon might not be the biggest threat, but they are the most immediate. Wait until they start dumping their trash in your front yard and see how you like it. Oh, fine. We'll blow up Malon Prime or something. I don't know. Hey, Malon, Captain. Hi, Admiral Hale. Are you here to preach about responsible waste management too? You can save it. I have a commitment to my people and my planet that supersedes any other concerns. So the Talaxians are accusing you guys, quite rightly, of dumping all your toxic waste on their doorstep. How dare you dictate how we should behave! The disposal of hazardous waste is a noble sacrifice my people make on behalf of their families. Who are you to cheapen their sacrifice? What we do is none of your business. Oh, speaking of business, I hear it's highly profitable when moving all of that waste around and there's a whole industry built around it, which is probably, admittedly, the prime motivating factor in you not abandoning this plan and developing some new cleaner technologies, which we could provide, but you're not interested, are you? Hey, what do you think of the hierarchy? Ah, I don't want to talk about the hierarchy. They're nothing but trouble. That's part of the reason we're looking for new dumping grounds. I've lost too many ships in the past year. Half a generation of valuable and desperately needed haulers. They're just gone. And I know the hierarchy is to blame. So how's this for an idea? We look for where you can safely dump your stuff and then you do that. We don't need outsiders telling us what to do. If the Talaxians want to talk, they can come to us directly. Oh, screw this noise. Let's just look at what the computer says is going on. The Malon have resisted attempts to accept less hazardous waste management practices and continue dumping waste throughout the quadrant. The most at-risk populations are the Talaxians, who have a new colony close to Malon dumping grounds. The Malon have moved into Talaxian space to avoid hierarchy attacks. Diplomatic relations between the Malon and Talaxians are rapidly deteriorating. The Malon have accused the Talaxians of working with the hierarchy, a charge the Talaxians strenuously deny. Ah, uh, analysis? The Benthans could possibly pressure the Malon to return to the negotiation table. Okay, Benthans, we have a representative of the Benthans over there, so let's go talk to them next. Yes, what is your question? I am rather busy. The Hazari are stepping up their smuggling operations, and the Hierarchy's new drive for profits has created a significant increase in attacks on unaligned transports. So there's a lot of important discussion going on at the minute, but before I do, can I pick your brains and what do you think of the Hierarchy? The Hierarchy's surveillance measures are the best in the Quadrant, and that's left us more exposed than I would like. We're losing ships. Once or twice we found debris with Hierarchy weapon signatures. They're cautious. It's like they can smell traps. So the Talaxians are having issues with the Malon, and we've asked you here today to help 
pressure the Malon to back off. We have enough to do at the moment without getting into a dispute that doesn't concern us. The Hierarchy is harassing our supply lines, and I'm convinced they're behind the losses we've taken over the past three months. We're having to double up patrols, which means we're leaving holes the Hazari can slip through. The Malon are a headache we don't need. You know, it's been the Federation's experience that working together with other species usually accelerates results. Maybe we can talk to the Hazari? Good luck with that. The Hazari aren't interested in anything but making deals. This whole meeting is just a waste of time. Unity might work where you come from, but I don't have any reason to cooperate with criminals like the Hazari or thugs like the Hierarchy. I mean, making deals is part of the whole negotiating... Oh, whatever. What do you want? Did the Benthans make you one of their little deputies? Or was it the Malon? Before everyone broke ties with the Hierarchy, they told us what people say about us. Mercenaries. Honorless. Ha! They all deny it. But we know. Now we look out for ourselves. Hey, would you be willing to withdraw from Benthan space, please? No. We need to make a living, same as the rest of you. If the Benthans would take out the hierarchy on our borders, we wouldn't be forced to move into Benthan space. But no, they won't do that. They don't think mercenaries rate protection. Honestly, this all just sounds like you should all be working together in some form of Delta Alliance thingy, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just spitballing here, but uh, what do you think of the hierarchy? Troublemakers. They make our jobs harder and easier. They watch everyone. We used to trade for information from them, but now they won't sell. If we can capture one of their ships, it's like a treasure hoard of information. It makes hunting bounties real easy. But it's harder to take out their ships. I hear they're getting upgrades, and it's not just their ships. Stories going around about one captain whose arm was ripped off by a hierarchy commander. Used to be they'd run from fights. Now they start them. Okay, okay, we've reached the limit of what I can do here. Uh, I'm gonna go. Fine, run back to the Benthans. I'll be here if you want to talk business. <sighs> Unraveling this mess could take months, years. With that, the fictional ambassadors all beam out with nothing really accomplished here. Strangely, it seems fighting the Vardois as a unified enemy was enough to bring everyone together, but for some reason, the Hierarchy don't have that effect. The number of planets the Hierarchy have taken outright has increased 20% over the past six months. A push for higher profits has prompted steady growth of Hierarchy territory. Reports of abductions in areas near Hierarchy space have increased by 77.2%. However, this data has not been confirmed by outside sources because few Delta Quadrant species are willing to share information with the Federation. Further investigation is needed. Six months behind on forming an alliance where we should be. Let's listen to the logs. Ambassador's log, stardate 87234.5. Our allies in the Kiana system have been invaded by hierarchy forces. The Kiana colony is a small farming community with no strategic value, so the attack simply doesn't make sense. According to one survivor we managed to find, the hierarchy were working with the Ilachi. The Ilachi took captives to an unknown location. If I had to guess, the hierarchy are more adept at information manipulation and have run disruptive campaigns alongside their brute force operations, delaying any form of alliance, unlike the Vardwa, who simply hit things with bigger and bigger sticks. The computer has also detected the presence of heralds, meaning that the Iconian threat is still very much prevalent. Huh. Damn, that was useless. The Iconians were so determined to have a hold here that they simply found another species to fit the bill. Maybe if you had been a better negotiator, you would have been able to unite those representatives against the hierarchy. Then at least we would have had a chance. Sure, whatever. This scenario isn't as catastrophic as trying to remove the Iconians, but it's not exactly ideal either. 
We'll have to try something else. Yes, your scenario doesn't work. You must excuse my husband's harsh demeanor. This has been a very trying time for the Krenim. Thank you for helping us get this far. We'll keep working. No problem, and thank you very much. Trust my wife to be the voice of reason. Perhaps I was too hard on you. I... I just want to be able to fix all of this. We can't turn back time, but we can change it. Please speak to Gamma Team. Captain Nog thinks very highly of their plan. Ah, thank you, and I shall do that. And, uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll get there. Hello, we've been waiting for you. Our team is focusing on delaying tactics. What if Iconia had never been discovered? In 2365, Captain Donald Varley of the USS Yamato found a star chart on Denias III that revealed the location of Iconia. I want to redirect a meteor to impact the archaeological site on Denias III before Captain Varley begins his excavations. Iconia will remain a myth, and we will not attract the Iconians' attention as early as we did. Well, that's not going to be a very long delay because we found another Iconian gateway a year later. True, but if you compare the changes in Iconian technology over the past 200,000 years with what the rest of us have done in the past two centuries, it's obvious that the Iconian culture has stagnated while we have advanced rapidly. Additionally, there are other factors in play that could trigger the alliances and sharing of technology that have come about because of the Iconian threat. It's a risk, but it's one that could pay off. So you're trying to maintain our rate of technological progress and bias time? The program is set for Romulan space. Because the Hobus supernova was caused by direct Iconian interference, we expect Romulus to be intact in this new reality. As such, the Romulan Star Empire should once again be a major power in the Quadrant. Your role will be as an officer on a Romulan warbird. Ah, now I understand why Jerox here. I'm storing the Star Empire. Yes, to call it a huge change would be an understatement. Please be aware that nothing will be done unless the Republic agrees this is the best possible solution. There is already a team here working on the possible restoration of Romulus, and Commander Jirak has been authorized to speak for the Republic if needed. The fact that our data shows delaying the Iconian arrival will also save Romulus is an interesting coincidence, but it does not mean we will accept the solution without looking at other options. For the third time, we step into the holodeck and activate the scenario prepared on the data collected by the Gamma Team. Instantly, we are a Borde Romulan Tulwa class bridge being told that Commander Tamir is waiting for us. We ascend the steps out of the command pit and head to the generator room behind the bridge, which in this timeline is still very much Thaleron based. Lurking in the shadows is this timeline's potential commander to Mir. The original died early on at Kitama. This one appears to still be a member of the Star Empire. Ah, Sub-Commander. I'd like to test out some new security passcodes, if you would be so kind as to seal the doors and disable certain, uh, equipment. We need to talk. Understood, sir. We seal the shielded Thaleron room, and then break the installed Tau Shiar listening device that every Romulan ship has. Or at least, every Star Empire ship. Thank you for playing along, Sub-Commander. The Tal Shiar can't hear us now. I need to talk to you about the Tan and the Separatists. They've been located near the Dewa system. What we do next could change our future. Well, the only thing I know about the Separatists has all come through verified Romulan official channels. What do you know about them, sir? The Tan has been inspired by Spock's teaching. He and many others have left the homeworld and are gathered together in a flotilla somewhere near Tau Dewa. Datan and his allies have been making overtures of peace to both the Federation and the Klingons. Because of this, they have enough support that even the Tal Shiar won't take direct action against them. The Borg are at our borders. The Empire can't fight the Collective and the Separatists at the same time. So, a year delayed, but the Romulan reunification movement started by Ambassador Spock all those years ago is still in full swing. You're a... Uh... You're not suggesting we go over there and kill them, right? If I was, I wouldn't have needed you to lock the door. 
I intend to put Lieutenant Silan in the brig and then take this ship and crew to join the Separatists. Are you with me? So, again, a year delayed, but Tamer of our universe did the same thing. We would be traitors to the Empire if we did this. I know. I have tried to work within the system, but the system is broken and corrupt. Ditan and his people are building something better. You and I both know it. The crew knows it. We will take this warbird to Ditan, and we will finally be free. I wholeheartedly agree and think this is the best idea ever. Let's do it. Also, in this prediction, Gaia Salan apparently still works for the Tal Shi'ar. Now, Lieutenant Salan. Hi. Secret conversations between the commander and one of his senior officers? Very suspicious. Loyal citizens of the Romulan Star Empire have no need for locked doors. Yet they're so popular. What does that tell you about your society that you live in? But anyway, you're going to have to go with the security guards, I'm afraid. Tamer, you are a fool. And you will be the death of everyone on this ship. Tatan and his people are terrorists. If you join them, you will share their fate. Apologies for another instance of double-layered audio. Yay, quality. My friends, it is time we forge our own destiny. A, A destiny, destiny free, free from, from the tyranny, tyranny of the Tal Shiar. If we, if leave, we leave, we will, will have, have a better, better brighter, brighter future, future than what they, than would, what they allow would allow us. us. I know I this is a step into, into the, the unknown, unknown, but it is a but step, is a we, step will we will take together. together. Throw, Throw off, off your chains. chains. We, will we will join our brothers, brothers and sisters, and sisters in freedom. freedom. Well, things seem to be going okay-ish. We can talk to some of the other officers to get a hand on the situation further. I wanted to let you know that I am with you and Commander Tamer. Some of my family has left Romulus to join Datan. I'll be proud to join them. Set course for the Dewa system. Who knows, we might even find a new Romulus. A brief perusal of the generated records reveals that the new Romulan movement has reached out to Starfleet and the KDF, as it did before, and that the Federation is helping out. It also shows us a glimpse of life aboard a Star Empire vessel, as there are mandatory propaganda lectures to attend on a daily basis. The Star Empire is a stronger power than it was before, but it looks like the fracturing of its people was bound to happen even without the catalyst of the Hobus supernova. There is a growing concern over the level of Borg activity, however, when they continue to push into the Beta Quadrant. However, there are no signs of Iconian activity, and no one has even heard of a Herald yet. That is the most promising simulation yet. It appears there was some merit to our hypothesis that the Iconians advanced their plans due to early contact. That's not perfect though, was it? There's a mention of increased Borg activity and the Star Empire was still very... Star Empire-y. The readings do indicate higher levels of Borg activity, but it should be an acceptable risk. Mm, this is still a major change for the timeline, although admittedly it doesn't change as much as I thought. We should still proceed with caution, and it changes a lot for Romulus. The data in this simulation does show higher Borg activity than we're currently seeing, but there are no signs of Herald, Iconian, or Solonay presence at all. And while the Romulan Star Empire is restored to their former power, there is a democratic Romulan group opposing the Tal Shiar. And more importantly, Romulus is intact. This is the result many of our Romulan researchers have been trying to bring about. It needs to be a proper discussion on this. It's a huge change. It's not our reality at the minute, but if it were, could things carry on as they should be? It could change everything we know. The political calculus of the Quadrant will change, but the data supports what you saw on the holodeck. No Iconians. We have solid projections. The only suggestion I have now is that you consider it in conjunction with Captain Nog and the Republic representatives here. Yeah, if we are going to change something, this is more promising. This last test has the most promising results I've seen, and saving the Romulan homeworld is an added bonus. We're not going to have a lot of shots at this. I've been looking at Anorex's work, and I think it's too easy to get into a temporal loop where you try again and again for a specific result, and time starts fighting back. I'm inclined to say this is our best chance. 
but this will have a huge impact on the reality we know, especially your people, Commander Jurok. I won't give my authorization without hearing from everyone. Uh, yeah, I suppose we're not going to get an outcome that's like 100% like it is now, just minus Iconians. What are your thoughts? This is difficult. It would change everything for us. We'd have our home back, but the Republic, everything we've built, it would all be gone. But there's still hope. Even in this other reality, Datan has led many Romulans away from Sela and her tall Shi'ar thugs. Yeah, this is really going to impact the Republic. Well, I mean, there might not even be a Republic, at least not for a while. The simulation specifically mentioned Datan and a separatist movement. Commander Tamer makes the choice to join Datan, the same choice he made after the homeworld was lost. With Romulus, we could have numbers. More people who have had enough of the Tal Shiar's oppression could join us. Maybe millions more. If Datan is able to get a movement going, even at the height of the Empire's power, I have to believe that change is possible. Well, as a designated face of the Republic, what do you think we should do? Make the incursion. The lives we save will be worth the work we'll have to do to reform the Republic. The Tal Shiar wasn't able to stop us the first time. They won't stop us again. Alright, let's load the target data into the time ship. We can talk about it more on the way. I think we're actually doing this. We inform the crews of the Armager and the Lisette as we prep to make our move. After all the deliberation, things are moving quickly now. We can change our minds on the way, but the elimination of a single target will lead to a radical shift in the powers of the Alpha Quadrant. Target acquired and locked. Activating weapon. Incursion complete. It will be good to see the world of my birth again. Elements? Is that... Romulus? It's been completely assimilated! Yes, I think we have a problem. Oh, 